Hello everybody and welcome to the Jerry PT version of PT on Ice. Christina Previtt here, one of the older adult faculty here with the Institute of Clinical Excellence. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week. I always say that I can't believe how fast weeks fly by. We are already on week three of our cohort of the modern management of the older adult. And so weeks just seem to fly. So I'm a Canadian PT and we are actually going into a long weekend this weekend, which is pretty exciting. And uh, so we are just vamping up uh, to have a nice heat wave for the long weekend. So it's gonna be fantastic. Uh, so today for our uh, episode, we had gotten talking with the modern management cohort about different theories of aging and different er theories of uh, successful aging. And as a PT who's working in private practice, oftentimes we're looking for clinical guidelines that help guide our treatment programs. And so we tend to see uh, these protocols that are coming up for, for example, like post-surgical ACL, we have different loading protocols for tendinopathies. And it got me thinking about some of the work that I'm doing in my aging PhD. So in some of our research questions and in some of my doctoral work, some of the things that are really important is to use theoretical constructs to essentially guide your thinking. So this theory, these theories of aging and theories of successful aging are helping guide some of our research questions uh, because um, these are the type of uh, questions that we are trying to answer through the research to try and prove or disprove different theories. So one of the theories of successful aging that has really guided not only my research world, but also some of my clinical PT world is uh, the theory of selection, optimization, and compensation. So uh, some of my home health PTs, so it's generally called SOC theory. And apparently that is like, a, that acronym SOC is a voodoo word because it's start of care. But I'm in the Canadian system, so I don't really get the joke, but I'm sure that um, this is a documentation thing. And so I'm just gonna call it selection, optimization, and compensation. And so in this theory, it is saying that as we get older, we are seeing a decrease in functional reserve across multiple organ systems. We've talked about this as a spectrum because some people lose that reserve faster than others based on different lifestyle factors. You know, we've talked about this, these clinical geriatric syndromes and how they are not necessarily uh, completely one-to-one -one with people who are getting older. And so as we start to lose this reserve, we don't have the same resiliency in our systems. And with physical therapy, we tend to focus a lot on the neurological and muscular systems. And for that resiliency to go down, it means that we aren't capable of doing all of the things that used to be pretty second nature. And the literature is supporting that. We're saying, you know, after 50, we start to see uh, declines in strength. We have this preferential loss of type two fibers that tends to accelerate after the age of 70. And so aging can sometimes be uh, construed in this very negative way where the, the thought of aging is this accumulation of losses. And what do we need to do to maintain a quality of life that is acceptable for our clients? And this is where I like the theory of selection, optimization, and compensation to guide sometimes my assessment, but oftentimes also my treatment plans after that. And so this theory states that as we get older, we tend to select to continue doing the things that are really important to us. And when we're in our 40s, that can be 10 different things. But as we're in our 70s, that may be two or three things that are really important. And so for some of my clients, that can be to try to continue gardening. A lot of people, it's trying to continue to drive. You know, these types of things that are going to be really important for some of our older clients to be able to maintain their independence. So they're selecting these things. And then once we've selected the tasks that are really important to us, we kind of go along these optimization and compensation strategies. And this is where PT becomes really important. So as a clinician, in my assessment, I'm trying to see what my clients are selecting 
And then my goal is to try and help them along this optimization compensation continuum. And so I, I wanna think about, for example, our exercise programs. What we're doing is we're trying to mitigate that loss in our muscular system so that people are still able to functionally uh, perform a lot of the things that they want to be doing and essentially we are optimizing their function so we are trying to increase that functional resiliency as much as we possibly can and then eventually though we can no longer optimize and even if you think about in a background of different chronic conditions I think about some of my older clients with different chronic neurological issues sometimes we're not in optimization anymore and we're like, how can we continue to perform those functional tasks that are really important to my older clients by compensating the way that we do them? And so an example is, um, I'm gonna kind of go through the whole theory. So if we have an older client who's coming in and you're asking about what they wanna do and they're asking about their day to day and they say that they live in a two story house, they want to continue living in a two story house, but their bathroom, for example, is upstairs or their bedroom is upstairs and their kitchen is downstairs. And so they're going to select that they're gonna go upstairs, but they're probably gonna select that they're gonna do that a little bit less frequently because of maybe different losses in like leg power, leg musculature, um, some balance issues, for example. So we're gonna try and optimize so that when they do perform that task, they have the strength by getting them into a strengthening program that's focusing on lower body power and strength. And we're gonna try and progress that as much as we can so that they have the unilateral strength to be able to take the steps as they wish to. Also, the more power they have, the more strength that they have, the less fatigue they're gonna be as they're going up the stairs. So they may be able to select to go up the stairs more frequently. If, for example, we're getting to a point where, you know, that's just not possible, whether it be because of a pain point with arthritis, whether it be because of a loss of balance, whether it be just because of a loss of that functional resiliency over time, now we need to compensate for that loss of strength. So that may be making sure that there's the appropriate guardrails there so that they can use the arms to maintain balance and help with strength. That could be that they're switching from a step through to a step two pattern, so they're still able to get up there. That may be that we are going to try and refigure the house a little bit so that they don't have to go upstairs as much. So we're compensating for that loss of muscular strength by saying, okay, what can we bring downstairs that, you, that requires you to go up and down the stairs so that we're not uh, fatiguing you as much? we can start to compensate with energy conservation strategies. Say, okay, well, you tend to have more strength in the morning. Can we get some of those tasks done then? You know, so all of these different strategies that we use every single day that we probably don't even think about um, talking about because we're always along this optimization compensation. That's how we as rehabilitation professionals conceptualize our interventions. But this framework allows us to kind of see how this is gonna constitute successful aging for a lot of our clients. And so by using this theory, we are recognizing that with aging, we are gonna see losses. That's totally normal, unfortunately, but that we can improve quality of life and we can make sure that people are still feeling independent and fulfilled by saying, okay, let's try and select and use these strategies that are very strongly in the physical therapy wheelhouse, the rehabilitation wheelhouse to optimize and compensate. And really this theory has seen them as very distinct constructs, selection, optimization, and compensation. But I really do believe that they blend and we do this every day. You know, we try and say, okay, well, what is the best strategy? And I kind of see this optimization and compensation along this spectrum. We don't have to be choosing that we're optimizing or compensating. We can try and see where this person best fits along this continuum and apply multiple interventions to try and ensure that we are in the, the proper kind of space along this continuum. An example is for somebody who's using a gait aid. It doesn't mean that I'm going to stop trying to optimize their lower body strength through my strengthening program because I decided to allow them to compensate with a gait aid that's gonna improve their balance and make them a little bit more safe with community dwelling ambulation. So the reason why I really like this for my clinical practice, despite um, not only just the way that my, my brain is thinking and working through some of these problems, 
is that oftentimes some of the markers that we can use in our healthcare system for, for safety or for success may not nece necessarily be what my older clients are deeming success. And so what I mean by that is, um, I've talked about Atul Gawande's book, Being Mortal, a lot. And he talks about you know, how we think about things in our healthcare system versus what's really important to our older clients. And so, for example, oftentimes a metric of safety that we use in the healthcare setting is falls. And of course, that's a super important metric. We wanna make sure that our older clients are staying safe by avoiding falls as much as possible. But in the past, this is obviously not happening as much now, or at least I hope so, is people who are at high risk for falls would be restrained in their bedrooms more frequently to reduce their risk. And so if you would have asked a person, would you want to accept that amount of risk? Like, would you select to still walk even though you know that there is a risk that you may fall, I bet you a lot of my older clients would say yes. You know, um, I have a, a couple of clients who are in their 70s and 80s who still want to participate in church functions, who still want to be able to play pickleball, who are bowlers, who are euch euchre players, and they're going into the, they want to uh, participate in some of these community events, even if they have issues with strength balance and are having some trouble navigating around their environment. And so they're accepting that amount of risk. They're selecting to do those tasks. And so now, because they've selected these and because they're important to them, I'm going to try as much as I possibly can to place them optimally in these optimization and compensation strategies so that they are experiencing this quality of life that is important to them. And often that is my goal. I'm lucky, I'm in private practice physical therapy, and so I get to try and help people maintain mobility in the community. And that is so fulfilling for me. And I use this framework, this theory of selection, optimization, and compensation to really guide my thinking and make sure that I'm making everything about my client and their needs. Obviously, end of day, if there are certain things that are coming up as flags, I have to address that too. Uh, but thankfully, I often get to just allow them to maintain that independence. All right, um, that is it. If you guys want any more resources on this theory of selection, optimization, and compensation, absolutely um, message me below. If you could tag Christina Previtt as well, there's a lot of people that are on the ICE Facebook page. Um, so then I'll be able to see it directly. I'll be kind of checking throughout the day. I hope you guys have a wonderful Canada Day or Independence Day, July 4th weekend. Um, and that you're gonna have some time with family and friends and you're enjoying their, your summer. Um, and talk to you soon. Bye.